Hello, this is Dr. Kitch, and welcome to this webcast in my Introduction to Geotechnical Engineering series. This webcast is the first of two webcasts on earthwork in the field. This webcast, we will introduce the earthwork process. As an introductory webcast, most of the learning objectives are simple and knowledge-based. When you've completed this webcast, you should be able to define, cut, and fill, list and describe the steps in the earthwork process, use three-phase diagrams to show changes in the soil during earthwork, and list the equipment used in earthwork. Many, many civil engineering projects include earthwork in them. In fact, almost everyone does. This particular project shows a roadway project. And as you can see in the background, this area used to be a hill. The original ground surface was somewhere near this red line shown. And the soil beneath that has all been removed or cut from this area. Therefore, we call this area a cut area of the roadway. In the foreground, the original ground surface was much lower than the current roadway, as shown by these yellow lines. The soil has been placed in this area to raise the ground surface. We call this a fill area of the roadway. This next photo illustrates the construction of an earth dam. You can see that this entire area where the dam is to be placed has been cut, or some of the soil has been removed. In the center of the cut zone, you will see fill operations in progress to build the dam. And here's another example. This is an example of a construction of an earth pad to support a new home. This is entirely fill material, which has been brought in from another location. The location of the original source of the material is called the borrow or the borrow pit. I'm not sure why we call it borrow, because we never take the soil back. It's not borrowed at all, but that is a term that we use. The earthwork process generally follows a common set of steps. First, we cut or excavate the soil material from a borrow or a borrow pit. The borrow or cuttings are then transported or hauled from the borrow pit. They are often stockpiled at a location someplace between the borrow pit and the eventual fill area. When the material is needed, it is then transported again to the fill area. In some cases, a stockpile isn't needed. If there's no stockpile, the material is transported directly from the borrow area to the fill area. The fill process itself has three steps. First, the soil must be properly placed at the fill site. It isn't just dumped there. Each placement is called a lift, and the material is no longer borrow, but fill. After the soil is in place, it is usually moisture conditioned by either adding or removing water. By now, you should have some experience on how soil behavior can be dramatically affected by moisture content. We will learn more about how moisture content affects compaction in a later lesson. For now, you only need to know that it's important to soil compaction. After the fill material is placed and moisture conditioned, it is compacted to increase its strength and reduce its compressibility. The next series of photos will illustrate the earthwork process. Here you see the borrow area from an earth dam construction site. The excavator is digging up the borrow material and placing it in a large dump truck for hauling. In the background you can see a motor grader or road grader Graders are generally used in the placement process, not in the borrow process. In this case, the grader is being used to maintain the unpaved haul road. This photo shows a stockpile area of the project. The dump truck from the borrow area deposits the material in the rock crusher just to the left of this photo. This piece of machinery both crushes the large cobbles in, in the borrow and sorts the material into different sizes. The conveyors transport the material around the site to various stockpiles of different sized material from coarse gravels to sands. In the background you can see a loader filling up a dump truck from the stockpile of sand. This truck will transport the sand to the fill area. Here you see the dump truck from the previous photo dumping the fill material at its intended location. 
You'll note that, that at this point, the fill isn't placed very smoothly. Before the fill that can be compacted, it must be smoothed out to a uniform thickness. Here you see a dozer smoothing out the soil dumped by the dump truck. In this image, the dozer is actually moving from right to left, dragging the soil on the back side of its blade. The dozer leaves behind a relatively smooth layer of soil called a lift. I suppose it's called a lift because it lifts or raises the surface of this fill, although I've never really understood that. The thickness of a lift is typically 8 to 12 inches, or 20 to 30 centimeters. If the fill material is not at the optimal moisture content for compaction, then it is moisture conditioned. If the soil is too dry, water must be added. Here you see a water truck spraying water across the fill area to increase the moisture content of the soil. If the soil is too moist, it is disked to expose it to the wind and sun so it can dry out. Here you see an agricultural type disk set, but the ones used for construction are essentially the same. They are pulled by a separate tractor. The moisture conditioning can occur either before or after the fill material is smoothed out by the dozer. It depends upon the details of the particular construction operation. After moisture conditioning, the fill can be compacted. After moisture conditioning, the fill can be compacted. Here you see two smooth drum vibratory compactors working in tandem to complete a lift. The soil undergoes a number of changes during the earthwork process. I hope by now you've learned how important three-phase diagrams are for understanding soils. We will use three-phase diagrams to illustrate how a soil changes during the earthwork process. In its natural state at the borrow pit, a given amount of soil will contain certain amounts of mineral solids, water, and air, as you've already learned. When we excavate the soil in preparation for hauling, it will undergo some changes. The amount of solids and water won't change as we excavate the soil and place it in the dump truck. But the total volume will increase because the excavation process will loosen the soil. If the solids and the water don't change, the only way the total volume can change is to increase the volume of the air. We call this phenomenon bulking. After the dump truck in the borrow area is full, it transports its load of soil to the stockpile area where it is dumped or sorted into one or more stockpiles. The total of volume of the soil doesn't change significantly from transport to being stockpiled, and certainly the volume of solid material doesn't change in the stockpile. The water, however, is a different matter. The water content may or may not change while the soil is stockpiled. If the weather is hot and dry, water may evaporate from the soil, reducing the water content. If there is precipitation, the amount of water may increase. We don't really know for sure how the water content will change in the stockpile. It depends on the weather and how long the soil is stockpiled. When the material is needed for fill, it is transported from the stockpile to the fill area for placement. There is no significant change in total volume or amount of solids in the process. Recall, we want the soil to be at an optimal water content before starting the compaction process. This will often require moisture conditioning. If the stockpile material is drier than the optimal water content, the water must be added by spraying the fill with a water truck. If the stockpile material is moister than the optimal water content, then it must be disked and allowed to dry out. After moisture conditioning, the soil is compacted. There will be no change in the volume of the solids or the volume of water during compaction. However, the total volume of the soil will be significantly decreased by compaction. Since the water and the solids aren't changing, the only way there can be volume change is if the total air volume is decreased. This volume change from the stockpile to compacted soil is called shrinkage, which isn't really a good term. The soil isn't shrinking. We're pounding the heck out of it with some really heavy equipment. Still, that's the term that's used to describe this volume change. 
Notice that the only thing that doesn't change during the earthwork process is the volume of the solids. The water content will increase and decrease during the process. The total volume will definitely increase from its natural state during excavation. And it will definitely decrease from its state in the stockpile to its final compacted volume. Generally, the total volume of the compacted fill will be less than its total volume in its natural state, as shown here. However, if the natural soil is very dense, the compacted fill might have about the same volume or even more volume than the original volume. However, that's not often the case. You should study these three-phase diagrams to be sure you understand how the soil changes during earthwork. Before we finish this webcast, let's quickly review the learning objectives. You should now be able to define cut and fill and explain how they're used in civil engineering projects. You should be able to describe the earthwork process and all its steps. You should be able to use three-phase diagrams to illustrate the changes that occur in soil during earthwork. And finally, you should be able to list the kinds of equipment used in earthwork. I hope this webcast has been helpful in helping you learn the basics of earthwork. In part two of this earthwork series, we will discuss compaction equipment in more detail and will identify the key variables which control the compaction process in the field. See you in Earthwork Part 2.